crazy times just walking through the city right then. Um, it was like a scene out of The Walking Dead. I've never seen Sydney so quiet. Um, so thankfully we have technology that allows us to still present um, to everybody. Um, for those of you that did come and join us in the boardroom today, thank you very much. We appreciate um, the effort. So what we'll do today, we're just going to run through the investor presentation. Um, CEO of Azure, Glenn Tong, will deliver that. Um, I'll speak a little bit about the offer um, at the conclusion of the presentation. And we've we'll also got a special guest, um, Super Bowl winning Ryan McBean, um, who's been using Azure's NP1 Elite product. Um, and he'll just speak a little bit about his experiences um, since he started using it a couple of weeks ago. So with that said, I might hand over to Glenn, who will um, put the presentation up on your screen and we can get started. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them during the presentation and I will um, read them out and answer them at the end of the presentation. Thanks very much, Sean, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we know it's challenging at the moment to travel, uh, so we welcome you to this boardroom. Um, let me start with this presentation. Uh, Azure Health Technology is making a general public offer at the moment as part of the process for reputation on the ASX. And uh, Sean, did you want to do the same part as well? Um, before we get started, I just need to let everybody that's watching know that any information that is presented during um, this prezzo is of a general nature only. We've taken no, or no efforts been gone to to consider your personal needs. Before investing in Azure, please seek advice from a qualified professional. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Sean. <coughs> Let me introduce to you the management for SO, because that's one of the key assets of the company. We have put together a team who have a track record and, uh, and experience in turning technologies into returns on investment, a uh, team that has had a lot of industry experience. Uh, if you start off with myself as CEO, I have been in the biotech industry for about 25 years. Uh, I've run a number of companies as a CEO and also as a director uh, and, uh, and I've got direct experience in pharmaceuticals, diagnostics and a number of other biotechnologies. Uh, Richard Estelello is our president and CEO of the wholly owned subsidiary in America, Infectious Nutraceuticals. Richard's background is in the marketing and sales of nutraceuticals. His last job was as the CEO and president of Muscle Farm, Inc., uh, Muscle Farm Corp. Sorry in the US, so Richard knows the US market extremely well. And in his last job, he was able to grow the sales uh, from US 67 million to US 167 million in, in a matter of a few years. And we're hoping that he'll do the same at ACT. And Dr. David Kingston's background is in drug development. And David's experience has spanned preclinical all the way to phase one, all the way to phase four. So he's basically done everything there is to do in taking a drug from an idea to the laboratory bench uh, over to the market. David has developed over 40 new drugs and he has been involved in over 80 investigational new drug applications to the FDA. Oops. Just a little bit of time on uh, Stephen Yu, who will be taking care of the Chinese uh, marketing and sales for the company. Uh, one of the assets of the company is actually its uh, unique channels into China through some strategic partnerships. And Greg Starr is our CFO, company secretary, and executive director. The Scientific Advisory Board is noteworthy in that we've got some of the best brains in the industry for. Uh, the work that we're doing. We've talked about Dr. David Kingston already. 
Dr. Richard Pastel IO is one of the top cancer researchers in, in the world. Uh, his expertise is in prostate cancer, but he's got an expertise in cancer in general. He's published over 600 works and he's one of the most cited research oncologists in the world. Uh, Richard will be leading our pancreatic cancer program. Uh, we have Dr. Ed Gain from Auckland in New, New Zealand. And Dr. Gain is one of the top liver experts in the world. And Dr. Jordan Moon, who is an expert in clinical studies directed towards uh, uh, providing data to support claims of dietary supplements. So all of those people play a key role in taking the assets forward for this company. Our key focus is on two business models, and the, the two business models are tied together by uh, the same technology platform. So one part of the business is to manufacture, market, and sell nutraceuticals, and those nutraceuticals are patented, and they also are based on a proprietary and patented technology platform, which allows the uh, active ingredient, which is the top trienols, to get directly to the muscles and tissues of the body. And the second part of the uh, business is drug development, and we'll be focusing on two pharmaceutical indications of Rayburn medicine. We've basically got three technology platforms. One for dietary supplements called Mount 3, and we've already spoken about that, and we'll speak a little bit more about those, those dietary supplements. Trans T3 is the transcriptosal del delivery platform for our drugs. The Trans T3 basically allows the active ingredients to get to the places where it still does its work, like the muscles and the, uh, and the uh, tissues of the body directly, but not invasively, so without needles and without any surgery. Uh, Tocotrienol Pro Drugs does the same thing and also increases the dosage uh, that you can do. So trans T3 is uh, limited to around 60 milligrams per dose. Talk of trying the products, you can deliver grams. So we've got three platforms, one for the dietary supplements and two for the drugs, and that gives us a robust basis for developing some new products in the pharmaceutical side. The first problem that we've got that we solve is with the nutraceuticals. Uh, the late onset muscle soreness, which is DOMS, is something that afflicts a lot of people who are active. And as the name suggests, it's the type of soreness that you get a day or two after you exercise. And there's no cure for this, there's no treatment for this. People try ice baths, they try massages, but it's, uh, it's well acknowledged amongst people, uh, sports people that uh, DOMS has no treatment that's effective. So what we found early on was that uh, not only in DOMS, but also in exercise endurance, we get some dramatic improvements if we use our proprietary technology platform to deliver these type of dry emails. And so if you look at the right-hand side, we saw some massive reductions in DOMS. On the left-hand side, we saw some uh, significant improvements in exercise endurance. And then we had this backed up by a lot of anecdotal evidence, giving samples away to soccer players, bike riders, and netball players, and they all found a dramatic reduction in DOMS. They all found a dramatic improvement in muscle recovery. And then we did a formal study, a clinical study, a phase two clinical study in the US, based on um, a bunch of college gridiron players, and we found some surprising results. We, uh, well, some of the results weren't surprising. The DOMS results, mirrored what we had already, so it confirmed that this particular dietary supplement is very good for DOMS, it reduces DOMS, but what we found was that the muscle recovery improved dramatically, and also we found that maintenance of muscle power also in increased dramatically, and that's shown on this slide here. So the formal clinical study that we did in the US for gridiron players, college level gridiron players, um, really uh, confirmed everything that we saw in our internal studies uh, for this particular product, anyone who eat. Um, and a good progression for this story is that uh, we now have, as one of the brand ambassadors, and I'll let them speak for a little while here, uh, 
Mr. Ryan McBean, who's a Super Bowl uh, winning defensive linesman. And so we've progressed from just uh, having college level gridiron players to a natural Super Bowl winner. And Ryan's been trying this uh, product out for uh, a few weeks now, and, uh, and I'll hand over to Ryan to talk a little bit more about it. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today, and again, thanks for having me uh, uh, be a part of the company. Um, I, I played um, football now for over a decade. I'd say, um, you know, three years in high school, four years in college, Oklahoma State, and um, seven years at, in the NFL, in the pro level, and <clears throat> retired with a severe ankle injury, and um, which ended my career, won a Super Bowl ring. Um, so happy to take you to the bed. Um, but um, during this time, while I'm here in, 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 in Sydney, I was able to um, get on board and, and try out the, the supplements for about two weeks and saw um, major changes in my, in, in my recovery. Two days after, I would do a, a massive, say, a, a leg workout and, uh, and or a full body workout. And, was able to really um, feel um, the, the, the work and, and, and get to work actually back to the gym and, 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 and back working out following, following those, uh, those heavy lifting days. So I'm very excited about this product. I'm gonna keep taking this product and um, I'm gonna have even my family on this product. I'm really that excited about it and happy to join the team. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ryan. Uh, that's Ryan McBean, Super Bowl champion, who is one of the ambassadors for the product Anyone Elite. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so, just in summary, we've got two nutraceutical products which will be ready for sale and sales will commence shortly, like within four to five months of the offer closing. There will be sales uh, commencing in the US. And these two products uh, are Anyone Elite and Anyone Heart. Anyone Elite reduces DOMS, improves muscle recovery and improves muscle power and it's the only product available that does that and is patented as proprietary to their sort of health technology. And Anyone Heart uh, is our heart health product which targets basically the cardiovascular market, the, uh, the maintenance of heart health. There's a huge market in the US and also in Japan uh, and Anyone Elite and Anyone Heart will be launched at the same time about four to five months after the offer closes. And the, we have a strategic plan for uh, entering the US market. The US market is huge, but it's also very competitive. And it's essential that we have someone like Richard full-time there, focused on the market launch of anyone elite and anyone heart. And as you can see in this plan, we're doing a strategic launch where, uh, where there are multiple channels um, and the, there will be an endorsement and sponsorship program. And we've already set up the distribution setup and administration and or in the pilot batches. So we're, we're, we're now well and truly ready for the commercial launch of these products uh, in the US. So let me talk a little bit more about the second uh, delivery platform. The main advantage of this delivery platform is as well as being non-invasive, it's also got a great deal of flexibility of dosage. And sometimes when you're targeting indications like, ca like cancer, uh, you may need to uh, use very large doses. This is a much better technology for those large doses than the transmucosal technology. And it's also got some very strong patents. It was uh, invented by Monash Institute of Pharma School of Sciences in collaboration with us. Uh, so we're very proud of this, it's patented, and this will uh, be the basis of two of our four drug candidates.
we have using this second platform uh, completed some rat proof of concept studies. We've shown that it works. That is, uh, when you put the Toto Trainer Pro drug into a rat, uh, the, the Pro drug migrates into the lymphatic glands of the gut, and then it splits into the Toto Trainer and something else. So, so the, the concept of this particular drug works, and we're now optimizing the lead candidate as we speak. And then once we get that lead candidate, we will then take that into the clinic, just like we have with the transmucosal delivery uh, drugs. So let me talk a bit more about the drug development program that we've got. We're targeting two great unmet needs. The first one being fatty liver disease. Now fatty liver disease is a huge unmet need because there are no approved drugs anywhere for this particular indication. Uh, in the US alone, there are 80 to 100 million uh, patients with NAFLD. So about five times the entire Australian population has NAFLD in, um, in the US and there's no cure, there's no treatment. So the tocotrienos target fatty liver disease in a very unique way in that if you look at the cascade on the right hand side of this slide, a lot of other drugs that are targeted drugs target the disease uh, later on in the cascade, further down in the cascade. At tocotrienos target right at step one. It targets the disease right at step one because it inactivates the reactive oxygen species and that then reduces the inflammation, which then reduces the scarring, which is the fibrosis, which then reduces the cirrhosis and the cancer. So we're hitting the disease very strategically right at the start of it. And uh, there are clinical studies from other groups uh, on oral and deliberate tocotrienols that have shown a lot of promise. And so we feel that uh, by improving the delivery of the tocotrienols, just like we did with the exercise products, uh, if you improve the delivery, our theory is that that will improve the efficacy of these drugs. And moving on to the second great unmet need, which is pancreatic cancer, which is a big killer as far as cancer is concerned. Uh, the overall survival rate of uh, pancreatic cancer is very low. It's on average five months. Uh, and there is a treatment for pancreatic cancer. It's a, it's a combination of chemotherapy uh, surgery and radiotherapy, but it doesn't work all that well. It doesn't really improve your overall survival or the quality of life all that much. And this is a slide that speaks for itself. According to Dr. Pestel AO, uh, there, there's a great unmet need in here that can be filled, potentially filled, by the tocotrienol drugs that we're developing. And the way that tocotrienols work on cancer is very simple. Uh, it works basically in a two-pronged approach. Cancer cells have programmed cell death, so just like any other cell, it has a life cycle, it lives and it dies, and so it has programmed cell death, and that's called apoptosis. Tocotrinos have been shown to induce apoptosis, so it helps the cell die. Um, and then at the same time, can cancer cells can also spread, and that's one of the things, that, uh, one of the ways that cancer kills you. So, and it spreads by spreading stem cell like cancer cells and tocotrinos have been shown to inhibit, so stop the spreading of these cells in, in the process of metastasis. So by stopping metastasis and inducing apoptosis, uh, our drugs can target pancreatic cancer with a two-pronged approach. Now, pancreatic cancer is a smaller market, but it's, it's actually got as much of an unmet need as uh, as NAFLD, which is fatal liver disease, uh, simply because the treatment is not all that helpful at the moment, and it's a big killer. So the program that we're running uh, is involves four drug candidates, two targeting fatal liver disease, and two targeting pancreatic cancer. The IVB001 and IVB003 are based on the transmucosal platform, and that's already in phase two. So the phase two clinical studies will commence at the close of the offer. Uh, and also what's important to note with IPB001 and two, uh, sorry, one and three, is that uh, we have, sorry, excuse me, I'm showing you my email, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, 
What's important to note by BB1 and 3 is we've already gone through a formal process of consulting the FDA on the development pathway for these drugs, and they were broadly endorsing the uh, proposed pathway that we gave. So that's very encouraging, and it gives us a degree of certainty that uh, what we are planning to do in terms of the development of these two drugs is in line with what the FDA would expect. IBB002 and IBB004 are based on the top trial growth drugs, they're preclinical at this stage. We would hope to take it into the clinic as soon as possible, within the next year or two. Um, and, uh, and at the moment we are optimising the lead candidates for these two drugs. So let me talk about a little bit about our drug development strategy because we'll, we'll take things a little bit differently from some other companies. Um, most companies nowadays are targeting targeted therapy, so monoclonal antibodies and so forth. They're very uh, much frontier technologies, uh, the type of stuff that you get in the front, front approach of science. And you go ask yourself, why do you want targeted therapies? And it's because you can get efficacy with very little or no side effects. Uh, well, uh, tocotrienols and the way that we use tocotrienols uh, actually have efficacy with very little side effects. So it is in fact a target of therapy. And uh, the other question that really needs to be asked is, can target of therapies work for fatty liver disease and pancreatic cancer? And the answer is it's unlikely uh, that, that those types of therapies will work in this particular situation. Uh, fatty liver disease doesn't have a simple target. Pancreatic cancer, for example, 5% of it is associated with a genetic mutation, an identified genetic mutation. So even if you have a targeted genetic therapy for pancreatic cancer, you're really targeting only less than 5% of pancreatic cancer. So, uh, so we've, we've got a slightly different strategy in that tocotrienols have a lot of promise for fatty liver disease and pancreatic cancer. In the case of, um, for all four drug candidates, what we're doing is improving the bioavailability of something that's already been shown to be effective. Uh, and, and doing it in a non-invasive way, and, uh, and all these drug candidates have good safety and toxicity profiles, uh, so they're likely to have few with any side effects. We've completed the phase 1A already for all of the transmucosal drug delivery candidates, uh, and we were able to show that bioavailability was increased, uh, and we were able to show that uh, the uh, the drug was easier to take, palatable, and well tolerated. So, what does the next two years, two three years look like? Uh, in the ideal case, uh, we should be able to commence two clinical phase two clinical studies upon the close of the offer. And so, we will have, in the case of the fatty liver disease, a data rebuild by the end of year two, which is the end of next year. And in the case of pancreatic cancer, shortly afterwards, we should have a data rebound by the year after. Now, I won't go through all the corporate milestones, but there are many. Uh, basically, upon the close of the offer, we'll be looking forward to uh, completing the lead optimization for the top trainer pro drugs. Uh, we're looking forward to the first sale of nutraceuticals in the US and in other major markets. And we're looking forward to also to uh, reporting on the progress of two clinical studies uh, throughout the next two years. And as I said before, the clinical data readout for the fatty liver disease is expected uh, towards Q4 of 2020. Uh, I won't go spend too much time on the board of directors, only to introduce our chairman to you, uh, Lou Bonaccio, who is also the chairman of Avita Medical. And he's also an independent non-executive director of Sonic Health. Uh, Lou has a wealth of um, uh, biotechnology and life sciences industry experience uh, as a director. Uh, so we're very fortunate that Lou chairing the company. And Mr. Aidan Jiang uh, is a very important strategic uh, partner in the company as well as a director of the company. And Aidan brings a huge network and distribution channels in China, which will be key to the company's success. And you've met all the directors already, except for Kevin Chen, who uh, is also um, an expert on cross-border interactions between Australia and, uh, and Asian countries. Uh, so he's a very important director on our board. Uh, what I'll 
do is, at this stage, I'll hand over to Sean Cartwright as the lead manager to uh, finish off on what the offer actually entails. Thank you, Glenn. Um, thanks for um, bearing with us. Um, so, we've got a pretty interesting cap table here and I think a very well-priced offer. Um, the business has not only one compound, that we a phase two trial, it has two. Um, and on a maximum road, we're gonna have a market cap of $31 million, which prices this incredibly competitively um, when compared to its peers. When you add in the real prospect of early revenues from the nutraceutical range, um, this company has really three options, um, three opportunities to generate value for shareholders. Uh, one through revenue, and two opportunities through positive readouts from the clinical programs, probably within 18 months, Glenn? Within 18 months. Um, like Ryan, um, I've actually been using the product for quite some time now, about three weeks. Um, I'm a triathlete and I do F45 most days, and within two days of using um, any one elite, my, uh, my output and my ability to back up has increased exponentially. Um, so my results are pretty much exactly the same as what Ryan has said um, that he's experienced. Um, I've noticed quite a few people have logged in late, so I'll ask Ryan just to say a few words about his experiences after um, we finish wrapping this up. Um, but the use of funds, every dollar that we're raising will go to, um, towards creating value for the company, and I think it's really important to state that we have secured a strategic cornerstone investor. Um, that's got the ability to help us distribute uh, the nutraceutical range um, throughout the Asian region. Um, so we're looking to close next week. The book build is going pretty well. Um, I've had quite a few interactions with a lot of the existing shareholders of Azure Health Technologies and I encourage anyone that's watching now that hasn't reached out um, to respond to the email that I sent through to existing shareholders a week ago um, and I'll just help you understand uh, what's happening with the transaction. Um, but otherwise, we're raising a minimum seven, uh, strategic cornerstone secured for four and a half. Um, and we're looking pretty good despite the turbulent times on the market. Um, I might just hand back over to Glenn to finish up and then Ryan, I might just get you to um, speak a little bit again about your experiences for the people that were unable to join us at 4.30. Thank you. Yeah, just for the people who've logged in late, uh, Sean's made a very good point that I want to reinforce in that this is a company that will have two forms of return on investment. The first form is that we are expecting to generate sales in the US and other major markets like China and Japan uh, pretty much immediately. So within four to five months of the close of the offer, we will have first sales in the US. Uh, so that's one part of the business. The other part of the business is a drug development business. And there, the major inflection point is when can you uh, prove whether the drug works? So when can you get efficacy data out to the market? And we expect to be able to have a clinical data read out within 18 to 24 months of the offer closing. So within 18 to 24 months, we will have data on at least one, if not two drugs, uh, uh, as to whether they uh, have sufficient efficacy to be uh, targeting those indications. So two points of uh, where, two opportunities if you like, at the same time for gaining a, a quick return on investment. So Ryan, do you want to just re, uh, recap on what yes. people just joined? Uh, how are you guys doing again? Nice to meet you, I'm Ryan. Um, I did want to hit <clears throat> this, this point here about um, you know, how helpful it's been for me. You know, I see a, um, a PT, a physical therapist, from Monday to Friday, and I had a severe ankle injury which caused me to end my career in Baltimore um, the, the year we won the Super Bowl. And what, I, what my PT and I realized that since I've been on this product for the last two weeks, that, that injured ankle, the inflammation that's been in that ankle for years now has gone down significantly. And I am excited about that because with the decrease in inflammation, pain has now also 
I'm subsided. So I'm excited about that. Um, I get excited about the product and will continue using it. Um, gym workouts, again, after, after a massive um, upper body day or lower body day, usually I would feel it. If I work out on a Monday, I would feel it, say, on a Wednesday, the next day. And I'm able to go back to the gym on a Wednesday and then knock out the same workout, the same full body workout with, um, with, 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 no, with no pain, with no soreness. So I'm, ex I'm excited about that, I'm truly excited about this product. And I'm excited to be on board. Again, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks very much, Ryan. Uh, I just just want to reinforce one point that Ryan just made uh, about inflammation and, and the great effect that the anyone who has had on that for him. Uh, that, by the way, is a key mechanism of how this works on fatty liver disease. We're switching off inflammation. Tocopherinose has been shown to be strongly anti-inflammatory. And so we're getting some, we're getting some evidence from the sports side and then the uh, uh, sports nutrition side that uh, it's quite promising for this uh, fatty liver disease drug to work. Uh, it's a strong anti-inflammatory. Um, and any questions uh, for anyone here? I do, mate. Thanks for the great presentation. Just a quick question. Are there any revenue projections in the prospectus? And we weren't able to. Uh, the auditors wouldn't allow any projections to be made simply because we're projecting from a base of zero. We haven't got any revenues as yet. Uh, but we are expecting to launch immediately the moment that the offer closes. Uh, so we've been through the four months. We'll have the inventory manufactured and we would have launched into at least uh, a few of the channels that you saw in that presentation yeah. there. Sure. Uh, and one other question, just with the nutraceutical, where are they manufactured? So any one of the leaf, any... They're manufactured in a GMP manufacturer called Capstone Manufacturing in Salt Lake City, in yes. Utah. Uh, so, so they're locally manufactured to the US market. Does anyone have any questions who's listening in? Okay, uh, well, if not, we might wrap things up there. Um, now, we will upload this video and distribute it uh, to everybody so that they can uh, log in and watch it later on. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to send an email through and either Glenn or myself or one of the other board members will respond to you. Um, but otherwise, thanks for logging in again. Um, thanks for bearing with us and allowing um, technology to help us deliver this presentation. Uh, it is insane out there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for Thank time. You. Thanks, Thank Glenn. You. Thank you. Feedback from the market for these products has been absolutely mind blowing. Um, everyone that uh, Richard Estevala in Florida has pitched the product to has said we will take it. And and the challenge with him actually at the moment is to pull the enthusiasm enthusiasm back a bit because we haven't got the money to make the product to build inventory. If they ask for product, you can't deliver it. So so the challenge here is not uh, whether people are interested. The challenge here is making sure we've got the logistics. To deliver what they're asking for. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. 
especially the anyone elite product has been uh, amazing. Because uh, not, there's nothing like it. If you walk into a sports store yeah. uh, and look at all the supplements, all the muscle uh, building products, all the protein powders, yeah. the half a dozen competitors in each category. But in this particular particular product, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing does it. Well, there is no similar products. Mm -hmm. The products that make similar claims. Okay, you got to be very careful. In the nutraceuticals industry, everyone claims everything, yeah. right? But this is the only product that is clinically proven, patented, so we've proven that it works, and we drive the marketing very aggressively, and, and you know, Ryan's just one of half a dozen ambassadors at that level who will be saying, hey, I'm a professional sportsman or ex-professional sportsman. It works on me. It works very specifically on these things. Yeah. And it's hundred percent natural as well. Yeah, it is natural. Yeah, it's, it's, it's natural. It tastes amazing. Yeah. By the way, you put it on your tongue. Yeah, it tastes fantastic. Yeah. 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 We have samples for yeah. everybody. Yeah. 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 yeah, But if I could say a bit more about this, uh, now that the two of you have made the trouble to come in uh, to explain the business, it's easy to look at one side of the business, which is the supplements, the nutraceuticals, right? That will make money. So we'll make sales, the sales will, hopefully we can make profits from the sales, that's how you make money there. It's very easy to understand. The R side of the business needs a little bit of understanding. We're not trying to take that drug to the market, to the pharmacy, okay? To get there, it takes seven or eight years, and it will cost, could cost several hundred million dollars. A small company doesn't do that, okay? What we're trying to do, no, what we are actually doing is testing the drug in phase two and proving that it works or not, we expect it to work. If it works, we then call up Glaxo or Pfizer or Merck and we say, we have proven that this particular new drug works on fatty liver disease or pancreatic cancer and then they will license it. They will get an exclusive license to it. Now these licenses are very, very lucrative. Uh, for example, a license in fatty liver disease, I would expect to have an upfront payment of at least 100 million US dollars and then milestone payments of at least probably four or five hundred million dollars and then royalties when, when they put the drug on the market in a few years time. So we're not relying on a small company like ours of 30 million market cap, we're relying on a, a company that has 300 billion dollar market cap to, to actually put the drug on the market. But the money that comes to us will be from the license. It will be when they say, well that drug works and we want a license to it. And that could happen in two years. We're not waiting 10 years, we're waiting two years. And for an investment of three to five million dollars on the trial, it's, uh, that, that's the game that we're playing on that side of the business. So does that mean the product will not be under the company name, but you license Correct. to the, to use? The chances of this being Invictus or a sore health technology, fatty liver disease drug, XYZ, is zero. It will be a, a Glaxo or a, a Merck or a Pfizer drug. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the patent? I need to register, is the patent registered under the company? Yes, yes, but we're licensing, yeah. So we're not selling the patent as here, we're licensing. And we probably never will sell the patent because there's fatty liver disease, there's pancreatic cancer, but there are at least another six things that we can work on. For example, autism, for example, uh, inflammation of joints, inflammation uh, of the heart, of the lungs. Because in general, uh, a lot of diseases you'll find is caused by inflammation. So, so if you dig down to what causes a lot of pain and a lot of suffering in humans, it's inflammation. So if you can switch that inflammation off, you can, you can treat a lot of different diseases. So, so, so our model was to start off with these two, license it out, and then work on some others, and then license it out. Is it right to say they will be part of the ingredient, or there will be their drugs, like you said? How would it going to work? It's, it's not only part of the ingredient, it's not product. Uh, well, the delivery method. The delivery method is what we want to buy. We own the delivery method. Yeah. That's an important part. We can't own top of trinos, it's a, it's a natural product. We have patent top of trinos. Yeah. However, the second platform that I talked about, top of trinos products, you can own that. Because that's a new, you take the natural product and you change it chemically. Yeah. Right? And we own that. Yeah. So no one else can, can use that ingredient uh, without paying for a license fee from us. Whereas with the other product, which is a natural product that's formulated, they can use the product, but if they use the product in that way, they have to pay a license fee. So what is the, um, how is the license fee? How are you going to package it? Is it by the usage of them? Like how many? No, no, it, it's structured in just the way that I told you. Uh, that's the usual structure. 
usually you have an upfront fee, and that pays for all the work that you've done in the past, plus profits. So it's usually about 100 million US-ish. And then you have milestone fees, like when they hit phase three, when they hit phase four, when they go on the market the first time, you then get paid fees, milestone fees. And that's usually around several hundred million dollars, three to five hundred million dollars. And then at the end, when the drug hits the market, when they start selling Glaxo fatty liver disease drug, then you get a percentage of what they sell mm -hmm. as a royalty. So usually, if you license either phase two, the percentage in royalty is above, let's say, anything below 10%, so maybe 5%, let's say. Now, sales of these drugs are going to be in the billions, right? If you get a fatty liver disease drug, even if there's six out there already, the sales will be billions because the market is 25 billion globally. So, so even if you get a, a fairly small drug uh, that takes a small market share, let's say one or two billion dollars a year, it doesn't take long to earn a big, big royalty. So, so that's the three ways that you earn in the license. You earn an upfront fee, milestone payments throughout the, the they development process. They pay the company, right? They, they pay, pay the company. Pay the company. Yeah. And for the investor, they only get when the drug released to the market. So no, no. no, no, when the 100 million dollars come in, uh, Unless Stephen spends a lot of money, it's going to be, uh, <laughs> there's going to be profit there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 there's going to be 99 million dollars of profit. will be reflected in the share price as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, the, the That's the other thing. If you go, I just want to put the comparison chart up on yeah. that. We should have. If you go from a company who has not proven the efficacy of a drug yet, mm -hmm. they don't know whether the drug works in or not. That's us. Mm -hmm. The value on the ASX is usually 10 to 50, 60 million. Yeah. I might compare it to yeah. um, If you don't mind, I might just uh, go through this slide yeah. here. So if we have a look on the comparables, so this is a list of other drugs that Azure will be compared to once it's listed. So everything on the left-hand side there. Um, so if you have a look at in phase two type drugs and what their market cap is, the increasing value just from getting some positive data in a phase two trial, it's, the difference is huge. Mm -hmm. So right now, Azure is, it will have a, an enterprise value, an enterprise value of $21 million when we list. Okay. So if we get positive readouts from any of these products, um, So we go up to, oh, this is the old version. So I, yeah, we had them reordered. But if we go up there and have a look, we've got, um, where's it, phase two? So we've got Bionomics. It's only got one phase two drug, and it's valued at $55 million, more than double what Azure is. Mm -hmm. um, where's another phase two? Uh, pretty sure. oh, two oh, phase oh, two. Oh, no, oh, that's oh. Us. Which one? On medical. Oh, oh, so that's one. That's phase that's one. That's phase one. So Imagine. You've got Imagine. 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 Yeah, Imagine. So that's got one phase two yeah. and others in preclinical. That's probably the closest comparison to yeah. Azure. So, and it's 140 million. Yeah. So that's seven times up on yeah. So on a 20 cent offer price, if we get any positive data, this company should jump up to the bit between 100 and 140 million market yeah. cap. So it's five to seven times your money back. That's not even counting the positive data readout from two phase two drugs, so let alone one. And it's not counting any revenue that's generated through the nutraceutical sales. So if this generates, let's say, this would probably normally be priced um, like five times revenue. That's how the market would view this. So if through the contacts that Stephen has and through Richard Estelada in America, if Azure is able to achieve sales of only $10 million a year within the next couple of years, that adds another $50 million worth of value to the company. So it, you know, it's, it's, when you look at how this offer's been priced, it is cheap. And it's not like it's a one trick pony where if one of the drugs fails, the company's bust, which is 95% of the other drugs there yeah. we're comparing it to. Yeah. There's two drugs, and there's a pipeline of other drugs coming through, yep. and we've got revenue from the nutraceuticals that are clinically proven to work. Let me tell you two very simple stories. Uh, Opthia, O-P-T-H-E-A, okay, Opthia. 
is an Australian stock exchange listed biotech company. Another company is called Paradigm Biotherapeutics. Paradigm, P-R-A-D-I-G-M. Optia was worth about 50 or 60 million dollars when they were our stage, which is pre-phase two, before they found out whether the drug works or not. So they've only got one drug and whether it works or not. Now they were now they were eight hundred million dollars. So they went from they went from fifty, sixty million dollars to eight hundred million dollars on their phase two clinical data readout. Now obviously a positive phase two clinical data readout. Um, now paradigm farms uh, therapeutics, same thing. They have a drug for osteoarthritis. Before they proved whether the drug worked or not, which is our stage now, they were worth about 40, 50 million dollars, uh, peaked at about 60. Now they're worth 800 million dollars. So the company that uh, Lou Bernaccio runs, uh, or he's the chairman, sorry, he doesn't run, he's the chairman of Vita Medical. Before they put their uh, wound healing, what they have is uh, they, they have a way of using human skin to treat wounds, burns. Uh, before they proved that the product worked and before they took it to the US market, they were worth nothing. They were worth $50, $60 million. No one wanted to touch them. Doors were slammed on them by investors. Now they're worth $1.4 billion when they've entered the US market, right? And they've proven that their product works. So in this particular industry, yes, there is a bit of risk there, but if you've got people who can manage those risks, people who've done that before, you can get some huge uplift. Uh, the, the, the swings are not 10% or 20%, we're talking about thousands of percent uh, that, that you can get. And I'll just add as well, um, so not only is Viriathus, my company, the lead manager that's putting this on the boards, I was an investor two years ago, I'm putting more money in now, and Ryan, not just the brand ambassador, he's actually putting his own money into the company, into the IPO. That's he believes in it so much. So this is um, it's pretty rare that you get access to a company like this. And I don't know if you've noticed. I'm sure you have the bloodbath on the market. Um, a lot of IPOs have been pulled. This is one that we won't pull. We're still going to press ahead because we're getting such good support um, and we're getting the money. The opportunity, I think, is probably just too great at this stage. And I've supported the company since November 2011. <laughs> so we've all been around a long time. We're all yeah. supporters. Yeah. Any other questions? Excellent. Well, I'll, um, I'll leave you with a business card and some samples so you can try it if you'd like. Yeah. Um, Glenn, maybe just give some directions on how to use. Yes, make sure that you don't um, just swallow it or chew on it. Stick it under your tongue, the powder. It's like a sachet of uh, sugar, so you yeah. just tip yeah. it up. Yeah, tip it up and uh, put it under your tongue and let it melt. Let it dissolve. Yeah. Because the whole point of this is to we formulate it so that the top trimers go into your capillaries that, and, not your, and, not, and not your gut. Yeah. That's a whole. If you, if you ask me what is the company about, it's about taking the natural product into your capillaries where your blood is directly without any needles or knives or anything like that. So just stick it under your tongue and let it dissolve and, and do its work. Yeah. Thanks, Lou. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.